It's officially 9.30. We'll call the meeting to order and we'll start off with the Pledge of Allegiance. And if the clerk could take the roll, please. Commissioner Look. Here. Commissioner Brastad. Here. Commissioner Kordiak. Here. Commissioner Sivaraja. Here. Commissioner West. Here. Commissioner Gamash. Here. Commissioner Schulte. Here. The first item is review of checks issued from Finance and Central Services and from Human Services. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Then we have the approval of the minutes from the September 12th County Board meeting. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Look. Further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. This morning we have two items under Chair's remarks. The first celebrates the Anoka Hennepin School District for receiving a national award with help from community partners, including our very own Sheriff's Office. Commissioner Schulte, could you please begin our recognition? Thank you, Madam Chair. This item relates to events that have become all too common in our world today, school emergencies involving active shooter. During an incident like this, having well-trained staff and a coordinated approach with local law enforcement can mean the difference between tragedy and safety of students and staff. Recently, the Anoka Hennepin School District collected top honors in the national competition for an internal training video that shows staff what to do in the event of an emergency. The video was produced in cooperation with the Anoka County Sheriff's Office and our local cable channel, QCTV. Chuck Holden, Chief Operations Officer for Anoka Hennepin Schools, is here to tell us more about the collaborative effort, this video, and its impacts. Chuck, please begin by introducing the group with you this morning. Thanks, Chuck. Thank you, Commissioner, Madam Chair, Commissioners. Thank you very much for having us here this morning. We appreciate it. Uh, I'd like to introduce our team, starting with uh, with my staff. Michelle Day is our uh, technical person and basically the the uh, producer of the of the video. So we're very pleased with her. Next to her is Taylor Johnson from QCTV. Uh, their producer, and behind him, the executive director of QCTV, Karen George. And right next to me are a uh, uh, huge collaboration effort with our SROs from the Sheriff's Department, John Matheson and Corey Boker. And in the back, if I could get Sheriff Stewart to stand up, he was an integral part of this effort as well. and. Uh, I think we made him look good on TV as well. <laughs> so, <clears throat> so thank you all. Um, as as uh, Commissioner Schulte said, members of the Anoka School Board, during the time of emergency, an effectively trained and prepared school staff, coupled with coordinated approach with law enforcement, makes a difference to ensure our safety and the safety of our students. The training video uh, that we received the award for on active shooter and enhanced lockdown uh, supports all of our teachers and staff with proper direction to maximize safety and was recognized for excellence by collecting the hometown video award. Uh, this is a, a plaque that we received, uh, which is a national competition <coughs> coordinated through the Alliance for Community Media. The Anoka County Sheriff's Office and Quad Cities Communi Community Television, QCTV, partnered with the district to complete the internal training program. I would literally love to show you the video, but it is an internal training program regarding school safety techni techniques that we don't want to make public, so it, it's not available for viewing. The Anoka technical, Hennepin Technical Support Technician Michelle Day coordinated the production in cooperation with our partners from the Sheriff's Office, John Matheson, Corey Boker, were instrumental in the success of the product production and, and in committee meetings leading up to it for a year, working on best concepts and working with Homeland Security and the FBI and other organizations. So there was much collaboration. 
Karen George, Executive Director of QCTV and producer Taylor Johnson, uh, were instrumental in the production and, and uh, the teamwork was, was very much appreciated. The Hometown Video Awards are highly competitive, honoring the highest quality community media programs from across, across the nation. School District very much appreciates the cooperation from Anoka County Sheriff's Office, QCTV, and keeping our school students and staff as safe as possible. So we're, uh, again, very proud of this, uh, and our staff are very appreciative of the efforts from the Sheriff's Department and all of our collaboration. Uh, and with that, I'll stand for any questions. Any questions or comments at all? Madam Chair, I, I would just comment. I, I'm thankful that there's wisdom in the room that's smart enough to keep this from not going public. <laughs> this is internal training, and I think far too often in today's society, we're too willing to share confidential, important information that should be kept under wraps. <laughs> Kudos to, uh, to the team that was smart enough to do that. Thank you. Well, and thank you, Chuck, and thank you for all of you for allowing us the opportunity to recognize your great work and this incredible partnership. And it's really reassuring to know that we have um, people in our community, teachers and staff, who are really well prepared to handle any sort of crisis situation and really keep our children safe. So again, congratulations to everyone involved and thank you for your great work. Yeah, thank you very much. I think they deserve a round of applause. <laughs> Madam Chair? Yes. Uh, just one quick question. Does anyone know, is this being shared with other school districts around the state or other school districts around the country? Uh, Commissioner Schulte, um, Actually, yes, we've had we've had interest from other school districts. We've had several meetings from out state districts coming in, and we've shared information with them uh, confidentially, and then showed them how to work with their law enforcement and and their local cable TV uh, stations to duplicate what we've done. Obviously, ours is unique to Anoka County Schools and some Hennepin County Schools, so it has to be individualized. But they are taking our concepts and using them. Terrific, thank you. Yeah. Madam Chair, just yeah. follow up. I, I was speaking to Chuck and, and the rest of the crew that worked on it, and you had mentioned how not only do you have all these skilled people there that you could they could tap into like UCTV and, and those within your own building and the Sheriff's Office, but it was also a f kind of a money saver for you in the training so you didn't have to pay for how much some of the other training uh, was. and. Uh, I think it adds to the fact that you use a local school and you use local people that people can pick out and and I think it's probably got more <coughs> impact but it was also not only the impact but also a money saver for the district as well. Very much so. Yes. Thank you, Commissioner. Great. Well, again, thank you so much. Thank you. Our second item this morning recognizes a long-standing partnership that Anoka County <coughs> has with the Banfield Lock Center for the Arts. The Banfield Lock Center was established in 1979 and moved into the historic Banfield Tavern building on the Mississippi River in Fridley in 1988. The Art Center has been partnering with Anoka County for the past 29 years. And I'd like to ask Commissioner Kordiak as Chair of the Parks and Community Services Committee to share some of his insight and introduce our guest. Commissioner. Thank you, Madam Chair. I appreciate that. Just a little history here. but the. Uh this is a structure that's been known to Anoka County for a long time. Well, it's been known to uh, the area for a long time, for it seems to have been constructed approximately 1847, is the story that we hear. It had been known as the Banfield Tavern and served as a trading post and a stop, an end stop along the Red River Ox Cart Trail. You know, all of you have heard about the Red River Ox Cart Trail. I deviate from my script for a little bit, but I didn't know where it ran to and from. But it is interesting that if you just Google Wikipedia a little bit. I've never known. I've heard about the trail forever. But for what it's worth, as a side note, this was actually a network of trails. It seemed to run from Canada and Manitoba, uh, I'm sorry, Win 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 Winnipeg, through, through North Dakota and South Dakota and through the, mid and the, the central Minnesota territories. Uh, it, really was, it really was a, uh, as, I, as I read the story just a little bit, the Hudson Bay Company, who many of you have heard of, and uh, their base kind of for trading furs and those things uh, was kind of at Grand Portage. Well, this is kind of an alternate option that gave, gave the, free tra the, the, the fur traders 
an option as to going to this network here. It was a monopoly, and they were breaking the monopoly with the Red Ox Trail, it would seem. So it was an interesting piece of history. I've never lo looked at that, but just a little bit there. We're kind of the end of the trail, but uh, it traversed far and wide, carrying furs commonly. Uh, Nooka County acquired the property in 1967. I think my father had a hand in that. He remembers walking it. I think the day he walked that property, the, he was stopped by somebody who told to get out, off the property. It turned out it was the mayor that was telling Albert to leave. <laughs> <laughs> and that explained what he was doing all on the premises and later went on to acquire it. But that was another story. Uh, maybe I should stop that. Uh, <laughs> Banfield, <laughs> Banfield was one of the first buildings in Anoka County to be listed on the U.S. Register of Historical Places back in 1976. It's surrounded by Lock Park, which some, some of you may have, vi have visited. A small park, but a lovely park with the confluence of both the, the, the Rum River and the Mississippi, and a great place to gather and have family gatherings of many kinds. We've had a partnership with them, Anoka County has for some 30 years now. I've been involved with this for many of those years. It's been really good for Anoka County, a great partnership for parks, a great place for us to hold activities, as well as support what they do, and they run that operation so very well. We appreciate what they do, providing enrichment opportunities and education in the area of arts. But the partnership has provided experience in promoting literary and visual interests for families and individuals throughout the region. At the same time, they're hosting a variety of, uh, of, of exhibits and art shows, both inside their facility and out, and has really been a great addition to the park and a great addition to the community as they offer rather unique opportunity to enjoy the arts. I mean, even in Oka County, we don't see many of these opportunities, and Banfield is certainly one of them. Uh, we're joined today by Roger Ebling. He's the, direct, the executive director. We're close with the Oka County Park System. I think I'll ask him to step forward a little bit and just give us a brief overview. He's only been at this for about 13 months now, mm -hmm. but that's long enough to know what's going on in the arts. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair and Commissioner Kordiak, for inviting me today. My name is Jeffrey Eveling. I'm the Executive Director for Banfield Lock Center for the Arts. And my special guest today is our newest board member, um, Joan Gilmore. She joined our Board of Directors uh, just within the past month. So Banfield Lock Center for the Arts, I believe, is the oldest art center in Anoka County. Thanks to the partnership with Anoka County, we have enriched the lives of area citizens for 29 years. In that 29 years, we have become the go-to place for creative inspiration and enjoyment through the visual and literary arts, serving over 8,000 individuals annually. Together, we are building a stronger community to engage artists and community members of all ages, backgrounds, and skill levels. We strive to be an enriching source for Anoka County citizens. Pictured here is Joyce Vanderwist, a longtime member, board member, artist, and teacher who has devoted much of her spare time to Banfield Lock Center for the Arts and to make sure that it endures uh, and thrives. Through membership and donation, we offer a wide range of opportunities in the arts, such as classes, exhibits, and monthly reading series. Our programming is guided by a volunteer board who works with the executive director in planning and implementation of the exhibits, classes, readings, and community events. Banfield Lock Center for the Arts relies on a dedicated group of volunteers to help run arts, uh, Art Center smoothly. They assist in providing information to visitors with the help of art purchases in our gift shops, registration for classes, mailings, maintaining the gardens, and helping with community events. We have a few volunteers who have been faithfully serving Banfield Lock Center for the Arts for over 15 years. We are grateful for uh, Banfield Tavern Building that Anoka County provides and helps maintain to house the Art Center. And we do our part in maintaining the interior by keeping it clean and uh, for all to enjoy. What will you find at Banfield Lock Center for the Arts throughout the year? We host 11 art exhibits every year, ranging from a very popular student art show to an exhibit showcasing the works of a local artist who had a 60-year creative year, or creative span, and uh, also groups that have shown artworks that are about our national parks. 
We have a reading series that's curated by some of the Metro's most talented writers and has become known as one of the best reading series in the Twin City Metro. Our annual Art at Rice Creek Festival held in September each year in Menomon Park. This festival provides the opportunity for artists to sell their works, to interact with community members, and, and festival goers can engage in art making and the entertainment. As we enter into our 30th year of partnership, here are a few projects that are in the works. We are working on a kids club, allowing kids to join for free and being able to give them monthly creative activities and classes and events for their families to attend. We're in the process of creating a printmaking program to help engage teenagers and adults and enhance their skills in drawing and painting through the knowledge of editioned artworks. And uh, we also have worked on a grant to try to uh, acquire an interactive uh, display panel to help professionalize our art talks, give us the ability to enhance our classes um, that are offered, and increase our footprint as a community resource for meetings and gatherings. I'd like to take a moment to highlight one of our most popular shows for the year, the Student Art Show. This particular year, we had over 550 works in the exhibit uh, by children in, from 15 area schools. Uh, it is one of the more popular shows that we have. The exhibit brought in over 1,200 visitors in a four-week time span. And here's a statement from a teacher and a student about the excitement of being in the show. A teacher shared the excitement of a kindergartner expressing, expressed after being told her work was selected for the show. She said, when I told my student that her artwork was chosen to be in the show, she replied, yes, I want to display my artwork to the universe. Uh, it was adorable, but inspiring to see someone so excited to participate. Uh, because of our partnership with Anoka County, we're able to encourage the creativity of uh, children and adults alike and help to enrich our community. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk a little bit about what we do. Well, and thank you, Jeffrey. If anyone out there is looking for a great educational opportunity for their children and really for the entire family to enjoy together, I encourage you to check out www.banfillock.org. And you can also find information on our website, theanokacountyparks.com. And if you search Monoman County Park, it will bring you um, to additional information. And thank you for your great work. Thank you. Okay, now we will move on to committee reports. Commissioner West. Thank you, Madam Chair. The first item is the Management Committee recommends adopting resolution 2017-M4. It's a re resolution offer, uh, authorizing execution of crime victim prosecutorial services grant agreement with the Minnesota Department of Public Safety Office of Justice Programs. It's contract C0005981. Is there an offer of the resolution? So moved. Resolution has been offered. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Commissioner Brastad. Aye. Commissioner Kordiak. Aye. Commissioner Sivaraja. Aye. Commissioner West. Aye. Commissioner Gamash. Aye. Commissioner Schulte. Aye. Motion carries. The next item is on the additional agenda. It is approving contract C, C 0006073. It's a lease agreement with the city of Anoka for the following for the following four buildings at the Rum River Human Services Center site. The auditorium, cottage two, cottage three, and cottage four. And this is pretty uh, well-known situation that's been in the news recently and um, I'd like to move that. Is there a second? Second. Further discussion? Madam Chair. Commissioner. Just, I just had a question as I was reading through this and, and we had talked about it at the management committee and it just kind of came to me. Uh, and I'm not sure what, what the um, additional agreement might be, but once um, they start using the facility, once they, if, if they, they, they finish it and it's actually being used um, is there part of the agreement in the lease on, I don't know if we, we're sharing heating or if we're sharing any other types of expenses and those types of things. I guess I'm just kind of curious as to 
if and when that should happen, how are we going to be involved? Jerry. Madam Chair, uh, Commissioner McMash, uh, yes, there is a, a provision of the lease that it would allow us to provide steam, heat, uh, cold water and electricity okay. and other utilities they may want uh, they'll have to work on their own with the utility companies okay thank you there are further discussion madam chair commissioner I will comment that as mentioned by Commissioner West this has been a long time coming we've been working hard to to make sure that these facilities could be used for the benefit particularly of homeless veterans and uh, working diligently to protect both the taxpayer and to make sure that these historic buildings are possibly preserved in a way that benefits the entire community. And so it's, uh, I'm exuberant about the fact that this is being done. Look forward to uh, there being an event there Thursday evening from five to seven, uh, kind of a rally to uh, light up the cottages for the homeless veterans. So you're all welcome to attend, the public's welcome to attend, and, and I look forward to being there myself. Certainly very excited about the opportunity and the partnership in order to provide housing for homeless vets within the community. And, um, you know, we're happy to be able to be at this point where we've come to an agreement on a lease with the city and looking forward to a wonderful partnership that will serve our veterans well. So, um, you know, I. I can't think of a better use for um, those buildings out there. So. Any further discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Commissioner Kordiak. Aye. Commissioner Sivaraja. Aye. Commissioner West. Aye. Commissioner Gamash. Aye. Commissioner Schulte. Aye. Commissioner Look. Aye. Commissioner Brasted. Aye. Motion carries. And Madam Chair, that concludes my report. The rest is information. Thank you, Commissioner West. And I just want to stop and um, also <coughs> say thank you so much to uh, Jerry Soma, who has worked very hard on getting this lease to where it needs to be, um, and also uh, the folks from within the county attorney's office. I know it has been a... Um, and uh, we have Senator Abler here as well, who has been very passionate about this. And so, um, you know, we're very excited about this, and I know it's taken a, a lot of hard work and effort on behalf of the attorneys with, within the county attorney's department, and um, just appreciate their due diligence and their commitment in working with us to get this done. So thank you. Uh, Tony, did you? Well, thank you, Madam Chair. I'll pass your comments on to the staff that uh, did work very diligently on this uh, matter for an extended period of time. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And... Uh, Senator Abler, would you like to say anything? Welcome. Well, Good thanks to have for having here. me. I don't come very often, and it's uh, probably means things are going fine here, and I think things are running nicely. I uh, just, uh, actually, timing is everything. I uh, just at the meeting over at the city hall. They're working on uh, a big rally on Thursday. But first, I wanted to thank the county for their interest in veterans. And in con being concerned about Minnesota's horrible problem of having a very high rate of veteran suicide, which one is too many and we have dozens. There's a 20, 22 a day nationally, which is just tragic. And so I think it's uh, only right that the, that the county and the city would partner in taking these buildings that are uh, gathering dust and uh, other vermin and turn them into a use like this. And uh, especially when I thank uh, uh, Chair Sabriaja and uh, Commissioner Schulte for their work on uh, bringing this to uh, fruition, and certainly Jerry Soma and the staff. And uh, I think this is going to be challenging to get these buildings up and running quickly, but I think I, that would be great every day that these homeless vets set out there at risk of not seeing tomorrow by their own hand. And I think that compels a lot of the actions of you all as you uh, show your compassion and, and concern. And just to remind you, you're all invited to the rally, which is going to be at 5 o'clock on Thursday out on the grounds. And there's been very good coordination with the county and the city on siting. And, and the, the city is actually buying hamburgers and hot dogs to people who want to come. We'll need a lot of volunteers and a bunch of money. Uh, buying a boiler is going to cost about 30 grand just for the parts. And so where people want to get involved and, and make a difference, 
there's lots of things they can do. And uh, I am just mostly came to say thank you and with uh, enthusiasm toward rescuing these men and women who have put themselves in harm's way and now we can do our part. So thank you very much, Madam Chair. Thank you and appreciate your commitment and your passion in order to meet the needs of, of so many who unfortunately our country has left behind. Thank you very much. All right, now we move on to Transportation Committee report. Commissioner Schulte. Thank you, Madam Chair. Our Transportation Committee met on Monday, September 18th here in the Government Center. Uh, we have for you a number of items under action. We will, uh, with all of your consent, we will skip item number one and we'll hold that for another time. And we'll move on to item two. The committee recommends approval of a resolution revising the county highway system revoking the county road designation and releasing county road 79 and entering into a joint powers agreement with the city of coon rapids for the jurisdictional turn back of county road 79 from the westerly city limits of coon rapids to round lake boulevard and this uh, was county road 79 it will now be riverdale drive in coon rapids and uh, that's the action before us and i would move approval of the resolution Okay, so the resolution has been offered. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Next item. Item three is that the committee would recommend approval or resolution adopting the agreement between the Minnesota Department of Revenue and Anoka County for the continued collection of both a local transit sales and use tax and transit vehicle excise tax. Is there an offer of the resolution? I'll offer it. Further discussion? Madam Chair. Commissioner. You'll note in that verbiage, I inserted the word continued. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not, technically that's not in the resolution, but I wanted to make sure the public understands we are not instituting a new tax. This is the continuation of our current quarter cent sales tax. Uh, the money will now be coming directly to Anoka County for the use of transportation or transit projects within our CIP. It will no longer be going to the county's transit improvement board or delivery throughout the metro. Uh, so I just wanted to, I, I inserted that word continued to make sure everybody understands <coughs> this is not a new tax. Right. Thank you. Uh, is I any did. further discussion? <coughs> Hearing none, roll call vote. Commissioner Sivaraja. Aye. Commissioner West. Aye. Commissioner Gamash. Aye. Commissioner Schulte. Aye. Commissioner Look. Aye. Commissioner Brastad. Aye. Commissioner Kordiak. Aye. Motion carries. Next item. The committee recommends approval of an agreement between the Minnesota Department of Revenue and Anoka <clears throat> County for collection of both local transit sales and use tax and a transit vehicle excise tax. Is there a motion to approve? I'll move that. Okay, it's been moved by Commissioner Look, second by Commissioner Schulte. Further discussion? Just to clarify, Madam Chair, that this is the same tax we just talked about. Right? Roll call vote. Commissioner West? Aye. Commissioner Gamash? Aye. Commissioner Schulte? Aye. Commissioner Look? Aye. Commissioner Brastad? Aye. Commissioner Kordiak? Aye. Commissioner Sivaraja? Aye. Motion carries. Next item. The committee recommends approval of an assignment and assumption agreement of the 2009 capital grant agreement for the Fridley commuter rail station by and between the county's transit improvement board and Anoka County. Can I move it, Madam Chair? Been moved. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner West. Further discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Commissioner Gamash? Aye. Commissioner Schulte? Aye. Commissioner Look? Aye. Commissioner Brastad? Aye. Commissioner Kordiak? Aye. Commissioner Sivaraja? Aye. Commissioner West? Aye. Motion carries. Next item. The committee recommends approval of the assignment and assumption agreement of the amended and restated agreement for financial services with Hennepin County by and between the county's transit improvement board and Anoka, Dakota, Ramsey, and Washington counties. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Further discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Commissioner Schulte? Aye. Commissioner Look? Aye. Commissioner Brastad? Aye. Commissioner Kordiak? Aye. Commissioner Sivaraja? Aye. Commissioner West? Aye. Commissioner Gamash? Aye. Motion carries. Next item. The committee recommends approval of a contract, an assignment, 
and assumption agreement of the 2013 capital grant agreement for the <coughs> North Star Anoka Station, Anoka Commuter Rail Transit Village Parking Facility and Pedestrian Overpass by and between the County's Transit Improvement Board and Anoka County. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. There's a second. Second. Further discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Commissioner Look. Aye. Commissioner Brasted. Aye. Commissioner Kordiak. Aye. Commissioner Savaraja. Aye. Commissioner West. Aye. Commissioner Gamash. Aye. Commissioner Schulte. Aye. Motion carries. Next item. Madam Chair, I'm going to refer back to item seven just for a moment to, to thank D. Goodman and our staff here for all the extra work the closeout of CTIB County's Transit Improvement Board has caused for her and her staff. This has been a lot of work and it's a lot of I's being dotted and T's being crossed that isn't as simple as walking away from a meeting like we will do tomorrow for the last time hmm. at CTIB. Hmm. Uh, but with that said, our staff will be working on this for years to come. It doesn't go away overnight. And for that, my gratitude. Thank you. Uh, it does bring me then to item eight. The committee recommends approval of increasing contract by $500,000 to a total of $11,000. $227,418.69 for the reconstruction of Bunker Lake Boulevard from Crane Street to Van Buren Street in the cities of Andover and Ham Lake. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Further discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Commissioner Brasted? Aye. Commissioner Kordiak? Aye. Commissioner Sivaraja? Aye. Commissioner West? Aye. Commissioner Gamash? Aye. Commissioner Schulte? Aye. Commissioner Look? Aye. Motion carries. Next item. The committee recommends approval to enter into a maintenance agreement with the Rice Creek Watershed District for the maintenance of the 54-inch culvert on Ditch 62 along the south side of 109th Avenue. Is there a motion to approve? Move it. Is there a second? Second. Further discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Commissioner Gordiak. Aye. Commissioner Sivaraja. Aye. Commissioner West. Aye. Commissioner Gamash. Aye. Commissioner Schulte. Aye. Commissioner Look. Aye. Commissioner Brastad. Aye. Motion carries. And Madam Chair, under the informational items, I will just point out that we did discuss the, uh, the CIP, the Capital Improvement Program for the Highway Division, and our plans for the next five years. I urge any of you not on transportation to look over those documents, see if there's a project that's missed or a project that's being done too early or whatever your perception is, be sure and get back to anybody on the committee or directly to uh, Doug Fisher so we can make sure that our, our CIP is where it needs to be. With that, Madam Chair, that concludes my report. Thank you very much, Commissioner Schulte. Now we'll move on to Finance and Capital Improvements Committee report. Commissioner Look. Thank you, Madam Chair. The Finance and Capital Improvements Committee met on September 19th. We did come away with two action items, the first uh, being that the committee, uh, through discussion, recommended the county board approve contract C0005989 with J.A. Dalson out of South Minneapolis for the completion of the Far Cottage 10 roof replacement at the Rum River campus. Um, just recently here we were talking about cottages and work needing to be done for uh, homeless uh, veterans, and uh, this is a different cottage for uh, clarification. Um, the roof on this uh, was within estimate and it's an amount not to exceed $1,159,411. So as you can see there, they're not typical roofs for replacement. Um, and uh, Madam Chair, uh, we did do a little more research on this in terms of the bid that's currently out there right now. We have till uh, December 1st to accept this bid and so before uh, the county board today is the decision as to whether we want to go ahead and replace this roof um, or the other option on the table madam chair would be to determine if we want to table this and um, and kind of discuss more long-term plans as it relates to uh, buildings and possible bringing of people together into one building type of scenarios so madam chair yes commissioner I would just comment that this is, uh, obviously these roofs are expensive. Everyone we've done comes in really high and we understand they're intricate. And uh, I also understand that this roof is not collapsing. It's not causing danger or damage to property internally. 
continue can continue to be patched short term it would be my suggestion that if, if possible we uh, we delay this until maybe we do make a decision by the uh, by the expiration of this bid but in the meantime it gives us a couple of months to really delve into these issues and and understand each other's thoughts as to where we move forward so am i hearing a I'll, I'll move to table motion to table okay hey um and all those in favor Madam Chair. yes i can't help but comment that's I'm not a, i'm sorry it's not debatable <laughs> to table. Uh, it, the table is table. not a debatable motion Thank you. Thank you. Um, all those in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. all those opposed motion carries okay now we will move on to the next item madam chair the second item is the committee recommends the county board adopt resolution 2017-f7 providing for the prepayment and redemption of county outstanding general obligation bonds uh, as per the uh, information provided the city of lino lakes had a bond that county went in on we have about six hundred some thousand dollars of our portion on this bond the city of lino lakes has been rapidly or interested in rapidly repaying their bonds which is good and uh, this is a um, prepayment before the call date so this will be saving interest and also saving uh, the dollars necessary to levy for um, for the payment of this approximately one hundred and six hundred and five thousand dollars annually that's the county contribution I will offer the resolution is there further discussion hearing none roll call vote Commissioner Sivaraja. Aye. Commissioner West. Aye. Commissioner Gamash. Aye. Commissioner Schulte. Aye. Commissioner Look. Aye. Commissioner Brastad. Aye. Commissioner Cordia. Aye. Motion carries. Madam Chair, that concludes my report. All right. Thank you. Now we'll move on to Human Services Committee report. The first item is to consider recommending the county board enter into contract C00059990, a renewal with track group for electronic monitoring services from October 1st, 2017 through December 31st, 2018. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Further discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Commissioner West. Aye. Commissioner Gamash. Aye. Commissioner Schulte. Aye. Commissioner Look. Aye. Commissioner Brastad. Aye. Commissioner Kordiak. Aye. Commissioner Sivaraja. Aye. Motion carries. Under social services, consider recommending the county board negotiate and amend contract C0005258, Meridian Services, Inc., and contract C0005268, Tom Miss Allen, Inc., for the expansion of developmental disabilities waiver contracted case management services in an amount not to exceed 120000 for 2017 and 2018. As many of you have heard, um, with the implementation of min choices, we have seen the caseloads within this area rise dramatically, and this allows us to be able to continue to service those cases in a way that they, they need to be serviced. And so this has been a, a good partnership with these entities to provide that contracted case management services. So I will move approval. Is there a second? Okay. Further discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Commissioner Gamash? Aye. Commissioner Schulte? Aye. Commissioner Look? Aye. Commissioner Brastad? Aye. Commissioner Kordiak? Aye. Commissioner Sivaraja? Aye. Commissioner West? Aye. Motion carries. Under behavioral health, consider recommending the county board enter into contract C0005777 with Touchstone Mental Health for intensive residential treatment services and crisis residential stabilization services from November 1st, 2017 through December 31st, 2018. And I will move approval. Is there a second? Second. Further discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Commissioner Schulte? Aye. Commissioner Look? Aye. Commissioner Brastad? Aye. Commissioner Kordiak? Aye. Commissioner Sivaraja? Aye. Commissioner West? Aye. Commissioner Gamash? Aye. Motion carries. Under Community Health and Environmental Services, consider recommending the County Board enter, enter into contract C0005968, a renewal with the Minnesota Department of Human Services for Child and Teen Checkup Administrative Services in the amount of $1,017,044 for 2018 
with the 2019 budget being submitted to the Department of Human Services in the fall of 2018 and the 2020 budget being submitted to the fall in the fall of 2019 pending approval by the Anoka County Attorney's Office. I will move approval. Is there a second? Second. Further discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Commissioner Look. Aye. Commissioner Brastad. Aye. Commissioner Kordiak. Aye. Commissioner Sivaraja. Aye. Commissioner West. Aye. Commissioner Gamash. Aye. Commissioner Schulte. Aye. Motion carries. The next one is Resolution 2017 HS 16 Economic Assistance Bills, and I'll offer that resolution. Further discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Commissioner Brastad. Aye. Commissioner Kordiak. Aye. Commissioner Sivaraja. Aye. Commissioner West. Aye. Commissioner Gamash. Aye. Commissioner Schulte. Aye. Commissioner Luck. Aye. Motion carries. Next, we have Resolution 2017-HS18, accepting Minnesota housing funding for the Family Homeless Prevention and Assistance Program. And I'll offer that resolution. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Commissioner Kordiak. Aye. Commissioner Sivaraja. Aye. Commissioner West. Aye. Commissioner Gamash. Yes. Yeah. Commissioner Schulte. Aye. Commissioner Look. Aye. Commissioner Brastad. Aye. Motion carries. And finally, Resolution 2017 HS17, authorizing Signatory of Community Health and Environmental Services Director. And I'll offer that resolution. Further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. And finally, I would just remind everyone that the Walk for Hope is this Saturday morning out at Bunker Hills, and I believe it starts at 8.30. So encourage folks to participate in support of Alexandra House and their fight against domestic and sexual violence. And that concludes my report. Now we'll move on to Intergovernmental and Community Relations Committee report. Commissioner Brastad. Thank you, Madam Chair. We did meet on September 21st, and there were informational items only. That concludes my report. All right. Thank you very much. Now we'll move on to Property Records and Taxation Committee report. Commissioner Kordiak. Thank you, Madam Chair. As a prelude to my comments, and not to step backwards on any mm -hmm. prior item that we talked about, I'm just reminded of Judge Wargo, who was heavily involved in real estate back in the day. He was a county judge. He would recall that a building is only as good as its root. <laughs> um, <laughs> and beyond that, then, I have some topical I items for you. And one of them is, uh, is we recently had a, both a public and a private land sale. They were very successful. We're satisfied with the outcomes. Uh, we were approached by various jurisdictions as they looked at some of those outlots that we were involved with. And uh, I think we can group at least a few of these together. Item one, two, three, and four are requests from various jurisdictions uh, to recover a piece of tax forfeit property and take it from the sales list. One was in Commissioner Look's uh, neighborhood in the city of Ramsey. Uh, the other is, um, uh, and that's for a public purpose. Each of these are for public purpose. The other one is, 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 is Commissioner Look also in the city of Ramsey. The third was Commissioner Gamash's territory in cooperation with the highway department. Uh, for a piece of, of tax forfeit property. And the last one is in the city of Spring Lake Park. Uh, they have a project that they are working on. They're looking at a small piece of conveyance to assist their public purpose. And I think I would move, Madam Chair, items one, two, three, and four. Okay, so resolutions uh, 2017 PRT 8, T9, T10, and T11 have been offered. There further discussion. Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Next item. Thank you, Manager. Secondarily, and along with this item here, we have to classify these properties as non conveyance tax forfeit properties. Uh, that is what resolution PRT uh, T12 accomplishes. I would offer it. Resolution Ooh. has been offered. Yeah. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And, and lastly, I, item six, similarly, this request in the Department of Natural Resources to approve the sale, uh, which is to those jurisdictions of the tax forfeit property classification list. I'll offer that resolution. 
Resolution has been offered by Commissioner Kordiak. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Madam Chair. The other items were for information purposes only, and that would conclude my comments. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Commissioner. Now we'll move on to Public Safety Committee report. Commissioner Brasca. Thank you, Madam Chair. The committee recommends approval and execution of the 2017 Emergency Management Performance Grant between the State of Minnesota, the Department of Public Safety, and Anoka County Emergency Management in the amount of $126,502. Is there a motion to approve? No move. Is there a second? Second. Further discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Commissioner Sivaraja. Aye. Commissioner West. Aye. Commissioner Gamash. Aye. Commissioner Schulte. Aye. Commissioner Look. Aye. Commissioner Brastad. Aye. Commissioner Cordia. Aye. Motion carries. Next item. The committee recommends approval and execution of the 2018 <coughs> law enforcement contracts for a term of January 1st, 2018 through December 31st, 2018 with the following municipalities. And they are the city of Bethel for 612 hours of annual patrol service and 24 hour call and general services. Uh, the city agrees to pay the county $42,440 for that. The city of Columbus agrees to pay the county $367,206 for 12 hours per day of patrol service, five hours per week of community service officer coverage, and 24-hour uh, call and general services. And the City of Coon Rapids contract, they agree to, or I'm sorry, City of Ham Lake, they agree to pay the county the sum of $1,062,186. Their contract includes um, 36 hours per day of patrol service and the 24-hour call in general services. And I will move those three contracts. Is there a second? Second. Further discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Commissioner West? Aye. Commissioner Gamash? Aye. Commissioner Schulte? Aye. Commissioner Look? Aye. Commissioner Brastad? Aye. Commissioner Kordiak? Aye. Commissioner Sivaraja? Aye. Motion carries. The committee recommends adoption of resolution 2017-PS07, accepting dedicated donation from Paul and Lisa Minier in the amount of $3,000 on behalf of the Anoka County Sheriff's Office and the canine team of Deputy Cole Bank Erder and K-9 Heinz. I will offer the resolution. Is there further discussion? You know, we would really like to thank the Meniers. They have always <coughs> been uh, great supporters of our law enforcement here in Anoka County. Well, it's certainly a very generous gift and um, near and dear to my heart. My uh, husband actually had the opportunity to work with Officer Alvin Hines for a number of years in investigations in the city of Roseville. And he was, he was one of a kind for sure, just a, a great guy and so, very neat to see him honored in this way. I'm sure that it, it would mean a lot to him. So with that, any further discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Commissioner Gamash? Aye. Commissioner Schulte? Aye. Commissioner Look? Aye. Commissioner Brastad? Aye. Commissioner Kordiak? Aye. Commissioner Sivaraja? Aye. Commissioner West? Aye. Motion carries. Next item. The committee recommends adoption of resolution 2017 PS08, accepting dedicated donation from an anonymous donor in the amount of $500 to Anoka County in support of the Anoka County Sheriff's Office canine unit. And I'll offer that resolution. Resolution has been offered. Further discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Commissioner Schulte? Aye. Commissioner Look? Aye. Commissioner Brastad? Aye. Commissioner Kordiak? Aye. Commissioner Sivaraja? Aye. Commissioner West? Aye. Commissioner Gamash? Aye. Motion carries. Next item. The committee recommends adoption of resolution 2017 PS09, the county board authorization of signatory for the 2018 National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, which is the DWI officer's grant agreement. 
and approval and execution of the grant agreement. Uh, the total obligation of the state will not exceed 94,000 with an effective date of October 1st, 2017 through September 30th, 2018. Is there an offer of the resolution? I'll offer it. Resolution has been offered by Commissioner Look. Further discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Commissioner Look. Aye. Commissioner Brastad. Aye. Commissioner Kordiak. Aye. Commissioner Sivaraja. Aye. Commissioner West. Aye. Commissioner Gamash. Aye. Commissioner Schulte. Aye. Motion carries. Next item. The committee recommends adoption of resolution 2017-PS10, participation in the 2018 Toward Zero Death <coughs> Enforcement Grant. Uh, the total obligation of the state will not exceed $268,650 with an effective date of October 1st, 2017 through September 30th, 2018. Is there an offer of the resolution? I'll offer. Resolution has been offered by Commissioner Schulte. Further discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Commissioner Brastad? Aye. Commissioner Kordiak? Aye. Commissioner Sivaraja? Aye. Commissioner West? Aye. Commissioner Gamash? Aye. Commissioner Schulte? Aye. Commissioner Look? Aye. Motion carries. Next item. The committee recommends adoption of resolution 2017-PS11, the county board authorization for bicycle donation. Is there an offer of the resolution? I'll offer that. Resolution has been offered. Further discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Commissioner Kordiak? Aye. Commissioner Sivaraja? Aye. Commissioner West? Aye. Commissioner Gamash? Aye. Commissioner Schulte? Aye. Commissioner Look? Aye. Commissioner Brastad? Aye. Madam Chair. Motion carries. <coughs> I'm just going to clarify, a bicycle donation, these are lost and stolen bikes that, that they're donating? You know. They are bikes that the Sheriff's Department ends up with, and they are donating them sure. if sure. they're not returned sure. or found to their Great. owner. Great. Look, I never heard that them to the bikes for kids which Perfect. is another local organization thank you sorry to interrupt yeah no great yeah, great clarification mm -hmm. right uh, next item lastly the committee recommends approval and execution of the joint and cooperative agreement for the formation and administration of the anoka hennepin narcotics and violent crimes task force the agreement adds the city of rogers to the current members of the cities of Anoka, Blaine, Champlin, Columbia Heights, Coon Rapids, Fridley, Maple Grove, and Ramsey and the County of Anoka, effective September 1st, 2017. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded. Further discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Commissioner Sivaraja? Aye. Commissioner West? Aye. Commissioner Gamash? Aye. Commissioner Schulte? Aye. Commissioner Look? Aye. Commissioner Brastad? Aye. Commissioner Cordia? Aye. Motion carries. And Madam Chair, I'd just like to take a moment to thank Terry Stoltzman and the team um, he participated with. They went down to Florida to help with the aftermath of uh, the hurricane and, and did some very great work. So thank you, Terry, for working on on all of our behalf Terry would you like to say a few words about your experience down there sorry to put you on the spot uh, madam chair board uh, Terry Stoltzman your emergency management director I had the opportunity uh, to represent Anoka County as long as well as one of my volunteers Ralph Beerbaum to go down to Marathon Florida uh, which is in Monroe County the Keys which is pretty much devastated by the Hurricane Irma. So it's quite the adventure. We'll probably talk about it uh, later on, but lessons learned. We're doing great here in Anoka County for our preparedness efforts, but there's a lot of lessons learned to take back from, from the hurricane. Obviously, we're not going to have a hurricane, hopefully, here in Anoka County. <laughs> Let's hope. But we will have straight-line winds, tornadoes, and other types of events, flooding, which we, we see here throughout Minnesota. But on behalf of uh, our team, there are 16 Minnesotans went down to Monroe County to help them. At first, we thought we were going to go to Tallahassee, diverted a couple of times, held up by Irma, drove through Irma, the remnants. It was a pretty, uh, pretty amazing experience when you look at what we did down there. Mm -hmm. Our main mission was points of dispensing, food, water, ice. And without that, many people would have starved. There's deputies out in the field that hadn't eaten in three days. We made sure they had food and water. 
as well as all the citizens of that county from basically the midpoint down. So it's pretty amazing. So mm -hmm. well, thank, thank you. you again for your great work. Appreciate it. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Commissioner Brassad. Now on to item number eight, and uh, I think I'll ask Bill Keller. He might step forward. This is um, just in case there's any questions. The first is to consider approving contract C0006070, renewal of the proposed health insurance uh, package from Blue Cross Blue Shield for 30 hour or more per week benefit eligible positions of non-union and union employees for a one year period ending December 31st, 2018 with an overall premium increase of 8.5% with premium caps for 2019 and 2020 of 12 and percent And I would just say that Bill and the team worked very hard on trying to get them below the 8.5%. And given the utilization rate, it was just an impossibility. And so, um, Bill, do you want to just maybe highlight some of the things that we're going to, we're talking about maybe doing to try to get at that utilization rate? Sure. Thank you, Commissioner Sivaraja, um, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is Bill Keller. Uh, I am the Central Services Director for Anoka County. Um, as Commissioner Sivaraja has indicated, uh, we did have a pretty bad experience this year on utilization. Um, and we are working towards trying to lower that utilization. Um, we do have some things that are in place uh, with our well at work clinic. We're look, looking to move forward to hopefully add another body down there. Um, that's yet to come and in further discussion on that. Um, one of the other things that we have in plan is a um, application called Wallet Doc, which allows employees to go out and look at different possibilities of getting health care um, and how they can save dollars on their own health care, which could include anything from looking at prescriptions and where can I get the best deal on prescriptions as, as far as to uh, also looking for health care uh, procedures that may be out there where they can kind of shop around to see where they can get the best bang for their dollar. Um, in addition to that, we have another item that is out there that is called Doctors on Demand uh, that is free to our employees. Uh, it allows employees to go out and uh, use their computers in the comforts of either their own home or maybe in a huddle room or an office to be able to communicate with a doctor on some of the, um, uh, some of the um, smaller type items that people may have, uh, maybe strep throat or rashes or things like that that they can talk to a doctor over um, the internet to be able to get uh, the care that they need at a significantly reduced rate. So there are a number of things that are out there that we are looking at um, to try and curb that utilization as well. Thank you for highlighting um, those items and thanks again for your great work on this. Madam Chair. <clears throat> yeah. Quick question, Bill. I, I see that eight and a half percent is the premium cap for this year, but also 19 and 20 we have a premium cap of 12 and a half that's only if we re-sign with them because we're in a we're in a year now where our contract will be expiring is that accurate uh madam chair uh commissioner schulte that is correct so if we do choose to go again with blue cross blue shield this would be the maximum cap we would have that is correct thank you All right madam chair commissioner just want to just want to thank Bill. I know that you guys have negotiated hard on this years previous to try and limit. Uh, I think what, what we've seen is trends going up in in the cost of healthcare, and I think some people are experiencing thirty percent. And while eight and a half seems high, um, I think we're we're very fortunate to to be able to come in at eight and a half. A um, couple of things I wanted to comment also. Um, I find myself down in the cage or the workout uh, facility at the county and there's more and more and more county employees that are down there participating uh, in the different, uh, I don't know if it's yoga or whatever the different classes are that are down there um, and using the machines. So that's, it's encouraging to see that people are, um, are actively using that and, and wanting to uh, be more and more fit, which plays into the usage rates that we have here at the county. But then uh, the final thing I wanted to mention is, is the well at work clinic and 
uh, just on behalf of our family, uh, working with Janet down there, she's a, she's a star and everyone loves her. And I think a lot of people really uh, appreciate the work she does. I want to give a shout out to her. And, um, and I look forward to being able to add another body down there because I think people are actively finding that to be a, a very useful option, a local convenient option to get into. Sometimes you call to get an appointment at your local doctor's office and you're out, you know, a week or whatever the case is and and they're able to get in here so it's a, a great I think a great benefit for our employees so thank you for the work you do thank you thank you and uh, with that I will move the contract is there a second second <coughs> further discussion hearing none roll call vote Commissioner West aye Commissioner Gamash aye Commissioner Schulte aye Commissioner Look aye Commissioner Brastad aye Commissioner Kordiak aye Commissioner Sivaraja Aye. Motion carries. Then it's consider approving contract um, C0006069, the dental insurance renewal with health partners for 30 or more hour per week benefit eligible positions of non-union and union employees for a one year period ending December 31st, 2018 with no increase in premiums. And uh, I will move approval. Is there a second? Second. Further discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Commissioner Gamash. Aye. Commissioner Schulte. Aye. Commissioner Look. Aye. Commissioner Brastad. Aye. Commissioner Kordiak. Aye. Commissioner Sivaraja. Aye. Commissioner West. Aye. Motion carries. And then finally, we have consider approving contract C006072, the proposed retiree Medicare supplemental insurance renewal package with Blue Cross Blue Shield for plan year 2018. And uh, I think that folks will be quite pleased with this. Um, or did they didn't end up with big increases um, like sometimes we uh, anticipate. So again, appreciate the great work on that. And I will move approval. Is there a second? Second. second. It's been seconded by Commissioner Kordiak. Further discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Commissioner Schulte. Aye. Commissioner Look. Aye. Commissioner Brastad. Aye. Commissioner Kordiak. Aye. Commissioner Sivaraja. Aye. Commissioner West. Aye. Commissioner Gamash. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you very much, Bill. Thank you. Uh, next is um, consider resolution 2017-101, the resolution adopting the proposed property tax levy for program year 2018. And I will offer that resolution. Is there further discussion? I would just comment that um, public safety has <clears throat> been long been a top priority for this county board. And the levy increase that we're proposing will fund seven new positions in the sheriff's office and four new dispatcher positions in our 911 emergency communication center. And the 2018 budget is also impacted by our health insurance increase of eight and a half percent. And that we certainly are not unique in facing some of those challenges, but it does come at a cost. Um, but those are benefits that we need to continue to provide for our employees in order to continue our business and attract and retain the quality workforce that we have. Um, so I'm sure. the budget is before you. I would just comment that uh, we can't completely let the legislature off the hook. Uh, while they did uh, repair county program aid, not only repair the formula, but fund it. To a great deal so we are 1.2 million dollars ahead in that category and for that we thank the legislature but there was a sudden turn at the end that shifted a great deal of burden back to the counties within the human services realm um, under the men choices section and, and that affected our budget it may not be uh, as drastically as we chose to do under public safety but it, it made a difference where the dollars come from and how they're shifted mm -hmm. had they not had that shift we would not have this levy to this level. Good. Correct. Thank you. Further discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Commissioner Look. Aye. Commissioner Brastad. Aye. Commissioner Kordiak. Aye. Commissioner Sivaraja. Aye. Commissioner West. Aye. Commissioner Gamash. Aye. Commissioner Schulte. Aye. Motion carries. And then the next item is to consider resolution 2017-102, the resolution adopting the proposed public safety tax levy for program year 2018. 
and I'll offer the resolution. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Commissioner Brastad? Aye. Commissioner Kordiak? Aye. Commissioner Savaraja? Aye. Commissioner, Commissioner West, excuse me? Aye. Commissioner Gamash? Aye. Commissioner Schulte? Aye. Commissioner Look? Aye. Motion carries. Then for informational purposes, the County Board of Commissioners will hold a public meeting on December 7th at 6 p.m. at which the budget and final levy for 2018 will be considered and at which the public will have an opportunity to speak on the proposed budget. Then we have committee appointments. Consider reappointing Reverend David Leckalt to the Anoka County Children and Family Council for a three-year term ending May 31st, 2020 and consider reappointing the following individuals for a two-year term to the Community Corrections Advisory Board, um, Don Jonas, Dr. Roger Warner, and Judge Spencer Sokolowski. Is there a motion to approve A and B? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. And then for informational purposes, um, my appointment of Jamie Swenson to the Anoka County Workforce Development Board for a two-year term expiring June 30th, 2019. And if there's nothing else to come before the county board, meeting is adjourned.